Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com. Um, Monday, Merlin Monday, there's only two of these left, and then the big list video, and then, so actually technically there's four videos left anyway. So, as, as the order was drawn through the random number generator, it's going to be Merlin.com. I'll uh, speak briefly about the last video after this, the last individual album video. So, Merlin.com came out in 1999, October 18th, 1999. Wanted to pull up right your music. Let's see if my internet's still working. Yep, there we go. Um, the thing about this record, this, I will associate this with a couple things. Um, one being October of 90, yeah, October 18th, um, it came out, so. Merlion.com, it's sort of their album. You could say in some ways it was the first album they released in the quote-unquote internet age. Um, I'll show it to you. The CD, obviously, hence the title. There had been Jethro Tull, or it was like jtoll.com around the same time, and I think there were a bunch of bands that were releasing, um, like albums with the dot com in the title because it couldn't come up with anything more creative oh yeah this is the way it looked um so october of 1999 i just started the job i ended up um working for about five years the, the company well in, in effect the job um this album is known for all the photos, and I think I did mention it maybe in one other video, but I have a very sort of sad, happy, melancholy, nostalgic relationship with this album. Um, so, this was not the first time it happened, but I this album was released, here's the track list, and I didn't even know it was released. It's, again, a kind of product of, you know, a couple things, but one being just in the before the early internet age slash before the internet age, you got information about when new albums came out through either the radio or through magazines or maybe the newspaper occasionally, or like if you're at a show or something like a concert and then the band you see the band they'll say our album's coming out. Um, but I didn't know. I started working at the company September of 1999. I was there for five years. But this album, Spock Spears Day for a Night, also I think. I didn't know they were coming out. The the October 18th, 1899, it was only a few weeks later, I think, Dream Theater's album, Scenes for a Memory, it was like early November 99, came out. And, but i kind of sure, kind of certain that I actually listened to Scenes for Memory first. Um, because, you know, they were coming off Radiation, and before that, um, This Strange Engine, and well, I kind of knew about those at points when they were coming out. Radiation, not, not as much. You know, for whatever reason, you know, I was going to the library using the internet. I didn't have internet at home, and I just didn't know about it. So <clears throat> it probably took for me to learn about it online. And I was using some of the, the Yahoo groups and stuff. Maybe someone mentioned it there. I don't know. It was maybe December and January that winter. I did listen to this, and I really did like it a lot. Um... But, uh, yeah, I mean, that whole period of time, like, the summer of 99 was weird because I was let go of a previous employer. I'd moved out for the first time. It was a lot of weird transitional time that, you know, prioritizing when I'm going to buy music and finding about music wasn't at the top of my list always. And so I kind of associate 1999 as one of those transitional years where I wasn't on top of things as much as I would have been. A couple other times were a little bit like the 2013 a little bit and a couple of years, but... But I have very strong um, nostalgia and, um, you know, just it was a different time if that's talked about in the 90s and early 2000s, mid-2000s. Uh, but this record, I played a lot. Um, my favorite parts of this record, Merlion.com, most definitely is Interior Lulu, um, that, that epic, which I don't think is talked about enough. And I, in the grand scheme of the Merlion epics and best pieces, it's... Among my favorites, it's not in the top five necessarily, but it's probably in the top ten. I love that track. I love how it kind of goes along and builds, and then that kind of crazy middle section, which um, 
just listening just a little bit ago, I, I'm not sure if it is entirely Mark Kelly, but then, you know, maybe it is because of the textures. It might be some rothery because there's a rothery kind of rhythm part at the same time. Um, but it lyrics about, you know, thank God for the Internet and just talking about like sort of people using computers to communicate and basically run their lives. Um, as opposed to being in person, real world, three dimensional communication, seeing real people. But I kind of also associate it with just meeting people that you're meeting, talking to them, empty conversations, instant messaging, uh, emails, of course, but I mean, instant messaging was starting to, and like internet relay chat and all that stuff. Um, I met a lot of people, I met a lot of friends online, people that I've never met in person, or I met maybe once that around that time, a little bit after, and, you know, sort of, it was the <coughs> the dawn or sort of the segue into sort of the way technology computers have changed society in a lot of ways, at least Western civilization. Um, but it's just a terrific piece, you know, the acoustic part toward the end and the emotion from Hogarth. and um, House, though, I also have always liked, although that kind of grew on me over time. It's, I guess it's about Hogarth's marriage kind of collapsing and sort of contemplative, you know, wondering, you know, how it is without his wife. I don't know if the, the metaphor is that he's living in this house and she's not there anymore, or maybe the vice versa, the opposite, or both. I mean, that I can definitely, I've seen films and television shows like that where you just have one person, often it's the guy where the woman leaves him, and it's like, or she tells him to get lost. And it's just kind of, and you're without them, and you're just, it's depressing. It's very sad. And it's like, you want to comfort this person. You know, you could have done something different, said something different. A little bit like the moment I said it from Imogen Heap. Uh, that song has a lot of the same kind of tone and uh, ideas. Um, a Legacy I've always liked. Driving Track. Um, I don't know, talking about legacies. Legacy of, of the, I also, I forgot. It's right here. Here's the book, I believe with the lyrics, you know. I mean, the thing is, I was just going to say, you know, the fact I didn't know it came out and the fact it has all these photos from the fans that pre-ordered it or whatever. It was on the backs of, you know, with This Strange Engine tour, people pre-ordered, you know, self, you know, crowdfunded. And um, I remember that the thing is with Anarachnophobia, the element followed this, I did not want to miss out on that. Um, but my picture is not in here. You know, I wish I could have done that. Um, but um, that, 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 this album carries that stigma to me as well. Stigma or, I don't know, free bonus disc, which is one of the, probably the, ah, man, what does it say? Return this completed reply card and we'll send you a free, yes, enhanced Berlin bonus disc containing suits of live footage, biography, photographs, bonus tracks, uh, live links to webmerlin.com. You know, it was really kind of the, this was the start of, in effect, Racket Records too, so... I don't know if it was also the start of Lucy Jordache's relationship. It might have been. It was the album before. which She was a huge fan, and then they just... And she maybe had designed a website. I'm not sure. But you could say that Racket Records was sort of... Merlin.com, the website, Merlin.com, which obviously still exists, um, spawned, you know, br brought on uh, Racket Records, their label, you know, because they weren't going to be with a major label anymore. This is, must be... This is the enhanced CD, so I have the. That's why I, th I thought I had the enhanced CD because look, look at this, and this is the track list. It's got the answer machine. It's got a bunch of tracks from Radiation and Brave and For the Sunlight and um, Band Interview. I think this is the thing that has the thing taught that Hogarth talks about pop, pop in a good way. So I was just gonna go through more of the track list. Yeah, like Rich to me, although it, now listening is a maybe a thirty seconds to a minute longer than it for my my taste, but it's one of the catchiest tracks they've ever written, and it's a pop song, but it's, a, as, as Hogarth said in that enhanced CD, pop, pop in a good way. Um, Deserve is also kind of poppy. The, the comparison, I always think of the comparison that was made, I think it was the Marillion Club on Yahoo, it sounded like R.E.M.'s Orange Crush. It sounds like R.E.M., which I understand. The sax player, I don't really, I forgot the guy's name, um, it's on here... But he uh, he ended up Castle something Ben Castle. He plays sax. He's he's played with a bunch of people, including he played on the Storm Corrosion, Michael Ackerfeld, Stephen Wilson collaboration many years later. But um, 
you know, um, Rich, not Rich, but Go is also, a, that's a, that's a dreamy track. That's, I love that song. Um, kind of prophetic or kind of not prophetic, but therapeutic in some ways. Like, you know, you know, when I, I lost my job and then I'm, I'm working another job, I'm not sure if it's the thing I want to do. It, listening to this album at that time in the year 2000, mostly, you know, it definitely helped me, uh, therapeutically there with, uh, you know, just kind of not wor think about all the things that were stressing me out, you know, bills to pay and, um, you know, no romantic, you know, prospects, you know, why don't women like me? Why don't, why don't, can I meet a woman? You know, that was part of it. It was just, there were different th aspects to this record that, um, you know, that just definitely was the right time for me. I mean, I was listening to the scenes for a memory from Dream Theater and Spock Spirits Day for Night around the same time a lot. And then Transatlantic was later, but um, I associate those those fall and winter months, especially with those probably those three records. Um, and I always loved this record. I always loved it. I always was a fan of this record. I think it's become overlooked. I think Anorectophobia maybe is more appreciated. Um, I've never not liked this record. I think Tumbled Down the Years is okay. Um, Built-in Bastard Radar is a weird title. It's a weird message. Musically, though, I, th I like it. Unlike some of these songs, like Lucky Man, and which musically, just lyrically and musically, just kind of never worked for me that much. I always thought Building Bastard Radar worked musically. It's a, and the lyrics are a little odd. A little, you know, every woman has a built-in bastard radar. You know, watch out for those creepy men. You know, those creepy people. You know, it's like uh, Dateline, NBC, or whatever else. Um, Enlightened, the second half of that track, I think I like more than the first half. That's probably my least favorite song on this album, but I still enjoy it. So I'll go quickly and show the uh, the vinyl and then wrap this up. Um, so I, I got this, I think it was 2012 or 2013. And I was just looking at some information about it. It has a weird track list order where it has side C, which would be the third side, has tumbled down the years and then house. And the album ends with interior Lulu on side D of the second vinyl, which is um, odd, although some information on Wikipedia shows that the opposite, having house on side four. So I don't know, the Madfish 2 LP edition, I don't know which which one, if there's a difference, I'd have to go on to Discogs, but um, of course it has the lyrics, you know, you're, again, your 180 grams, got the, the Again, if I would have sent my photo in, my photo would be on all this stuff somewhere, or somewhere located, but, um, so, but, you know, that's, that's kind of it, you know, I mean, is it a huge regret? No, but as a fan, I kind of feel like I did miss out a little bit, and, you know, it's tough, it's tough, you know, when you're going through life, and you have to, you can't, you can't buy everything, you know, that, that you want always, you have to sometimes, you know, decide what's, needed as opposed to wanted or you know what your but what's more important at the time you know I had to pay my rent I had to pay my phone bill I had to pay my electric bill you know and I had to buy groceries you know and just and I was losing I took trips you know and I went I borrowed a bunch of money and we took for music festivals largely and so you learn some lessons about budget you know at some point even just the fact that I was a night owl then you know I, th I was reading some stuff I wrote online over the weekend, actually, about, I think about 9-11, because we just went through 9 the 20-year anniversary of 9-11, what was going on. I was trying to find something I would have wrote around 9-11. It wasn't that. It was like a year later, but, you know, I was, a, I'm a day person now. I have a day job. I never had a, I, my day job, quote-unquote job, was, um, um, I always think, I was like this. It's like, I don't know if this is in London or whatever, but. You know, The Matrix, that was around the time The Matrix came out with the graphics, and ironically there's another Matrix movie now coming out uh, this winter, but, uh, so things do kind of go full circle, but, you know, I, I was a night owl, and I would stay up to four or five in the morning, and, you know, and I did a lot of my writing, you know, when you're that young, I didn't have a lot of medical issues like I do now, so, you know, it's a different time, even though it was only 20, couple of years, 22 years ago, so... But that's my take on Merlion.com. Um, Merlion fans, what what is your take on it? Is it a forgotten album? Is it just a product of its time? You know, does it not compare to some of the records that followed? Or, you know, I don't. I wouldn't say I. You'll see in the rankings, Marbles. Some of these other records, I don't. I don't listen to. As, I listen to more than this. But 
I still appreciate this. And at one point, I almost thought this was... This was one of my favorite records at one point. It wasn't my favorite, but I mean, at one point when I, I was so attached to it, I listened to it so much for like a, a six-month period. Um, I was like, you know, Merlin.com, it's got Interior Lulu, one of their best songs ever, you know? And I, I love every song on it, you know? Why, why don't people talk about it more? I think it's just gotten overlooked. I think Anarachnophobia and Marbles, especially people talk about much more. And I think they maybe talk even more about Radiation now, which I think Radiation and this album have the most in common texturally. It sounds like... This, I can easily see how the two of them are back-to-back. -back. They sound very much a product of that the whole textures that, that Steve Rothery was using and electronic. You know, they were listening to Radiohead and... I think this was right around the time Kid A came out, though it may have come out before Kid A, because Kid A was 2000, but, you know, I don't know if they had done... I don't know, I just know that not, it was just... Radiohead was one of the forebears of that, then, you know, like, Massive Attack, a lot of the sort of trip-hop and, you know, other music, rock music and other related music was using a lot of electronics. And that was the whole belief, is that, well, there's hip-hop, what else can you do in music right now? There's rap, it was rap at the time. Well, things are going to be all computerized, so that's... You know, and this this album is largely about computers, about the internet, about technology as much as anything else. It's a lot about relationships too, but um, and it also is sort of the turn of the century. Although, of course, ironically, the next album they had, this is the 20th century, which sounds like the turn of the century. So, anyway, so I got one more of these uh, Merlin albums to do. It's the you can you can take a guess if you have been paying attention with the big one, um, and then uh, and it's just literally how it fell kind of fitting but um then i'll i don't know if i'll get to both this week thursday is yom kippur so i'm not working but i gotta bring my car in but um i guess realistically one day next week maybe even on friday i'll be able to do um the big ranking video right i'm just gonna have to come up with books or somehow because i don't want to go like 40 minutes long i'm just gonna do you know Number whatever, number whatever, number whatever, number 10, number 12, number eight, 5, and, you know. And then I'll do one more video at some point. I should wrangle up all the, uh, mainly the singles and some of the bootlegs. I don't know, that might be a few weeks down the road, because I want to start doing the Deer Hunter and some of these other bands. Sculptured, I'm, I'm going to get my copy of Liminal Phase soon, and then I'm going to probably do a video on Sculptured. So, But thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.